Welcome to just one of Skillcap's famous class guides that are the most valuable resource available that actually help you improve in Arena. This is just one of many videos that are a part of a comprehensive course for how to play Holy Paladin like a pro. We spent hundreds of hours developing these courses with players that have spent thousands of hours perfecting their craft. This allows you to learn all the secrets and strategies of the world's best in just a matter of minutes. For everything you need to go from feeling hopeless in PvP to being the teammate everyone wants and actually start climbing, be sure to check out Skillcapped after this if you're serious about improving. Hey everyone, and welcome to part two of our in-depth Holy Paladin guide. In this chapter, we're going to show you all the ins and outs of how to heal in a lot of different scenarios, ranging from healing basic sustained damage to knowing how you heal when the enemy team is training you or dropping their burst CDs. So let's start off with the basics. How should you be healing through sustained damage from the enemy team? Well, the first important thing to know is that you should always be playing with the Beacon of Faith talent. This allows you to place your beacon on two targets. Not only does beacon make sure that the beaconed target receives a part of the healing if you heal someone else, but casting Flash of Light or Holy Light on the target will give you one holy power, being a great source of extra healing. So now that you have beacon active, which spells should you be using to deal with enemy damage and when? First, let's start with Holy Shock. Holy Shock is going to be one of your main sources of healing in every single game and should always be used on CD. Not only does it do a ton of healing, but if it crits, it will also give you an infusion of life proc, which is an essential part of your healing, but more on that later. Next up, Bestow Faith. What does this do exactly? Well, it's a 12 second cooldown healing spell, which places a buff on your target that expires five seconds later for a significant amount of healing. So when's the best time to use this? Well, you should be trying to use it as often as possible as it is a good source of healing and it generates holy power as well. However, like we mentioned earlier, it takes five seconds for the healing to go off. Therefore, if you or your teammate is at low HP, you wanna make sure that you prioritize spells which heal instantly like Holy Shock or Word of Glory. Next up, Holy Light. This is one of your most mana efficient heals. You should always look for opportunities to cast Holy Light, especially if your team is quite high HP, but taking a decent amount of damage in the near future. However, Holy Light comes with an extremely long cast time of two seconds. This makes you easily susceptible to interrupts while casting. So before you start casting this spell, make sure that you're far away from enemy melees and that enemy casters don't have their interrupts up. Next is the most important aspect of healing through sustained damage as a Holy Paladin, Infusion of Light. You'll gain this proc whenever your Holy Shock crits as we mentioned before. This buff makes either your next Holy Light heal for 30% more or reduces the mana cost of your next Flash of Light by 30%. So, how do you make the best use of this? Well, like we mentioned earlier, Holy Light is quite a long cast. However, you can combine your Infusion of Light proc with a Divine Favor, making sure you reduce the cast time and do a ton of healing in the process. So, it increases the healing of your Holy Light. Why would you ever want to use it on Flash of Light? First of all, the cast time is much shorter. Therefore, you can heal your teammates faster when they're at low HP. Sometimes you won't have enough time to cast a long Holy Light if they're in serious danger of dying. Additionally, Holy Paladins have recently seen a 30% nerf to their mana regeneration in PvP. Flash of Light combined with an Infusion of Light proc is also a great way to save some mana, which is much needed after these nerfs. Another source of healing that is often overlooked is Light of the Martyr as it heals for a relatively low amount. So it doesn't heal for too much, does some damage to yourself, and it's not affected by your beacon of light and generates no holy power. So how do you make use of this spell? Well, even though it's not a lot of healing, it is spammable and does not have a cast time. This means that you can make good usage out of it in some specific scenarios. The first one being a great way to provide some healing to your team while you are pushing in for CC. You won't have time to stand still and cast if you're running at an enemy player for a hodge. It's also good to use when the enemy team has one or multiple interrupts ready, especially when one of those interrupts landing on you can lose you the game. It's a great way to fill in some downtime between your Holy Shock, Bestow Faith, and Word of Glory. Lastly, we have that absolute core of your healing in PvP right now, Word of Glory. It should always be your number one priority spell as not only does it do a ton of healing, 
healing, it is also instant cast and costs no mana whatsoever. Board of Glory does a ton of healing, so if your target is at very high HP, it might be worth using Bestow Faith or Holy Light instead to keep them topped off, allowing you to save your Word of Glory for when you need some bigger heals. All right, now that you know how to deal with enemy sustained damage output, how should you be healing through burst damage? Firstly, one of the most important spells in your toolkit to deal with high burst damage is the Kyrian ability, Divine Toll. You want to make sure that you have the Ringing Clarity Conduit to make your Divine Toll even stronger. This does a crazy amount of healing right now and will essentially top yourself or one of your teammates no matter how low on HP they are. On top of doing a crazy amount of healing, it is actually possible to use Divine Toll while you are locked out of the Holy School. This means that if you get interrupted at extremely low HP, you can just Divine Toll yourself and you'll be completely fine. So you want to make sure to use this whenever someone on your team is at extremely low HP. However, because it will give you at least three Holy Power, you usually want to make sure that you spend your Holy Power before using Divine Toll so that you don't get overcapped. However, some of you may have chosen to play a Venthyr Paladin instead, which does not bring an amazing healing CD. Ashen Hollow, however, is a great way to do a ton of damage, which can be especially useful in 2v2. Another spell which is key to use during high enemy burst damage coming in is Divine Favor. Ideally, you want to use Divine Favor as often as possible, as it increases your healing done by your next Holy Light or Flash of Light by 100%. Whenever your team is taking a lot of damage, you usually want to use Divine Favor on Holy Light as it is the most healing output due to being able to combine it with Infusion of Light like we mentioned earlier. However, if your teammates are at very low health, you might want to use Divine Favor on a Flash of Light instead of Holy Light due to the much shorter cast time. Next up, Aura Mastery. Aura Mastery empowers your aura for yourself and your teammates for 8 seconds. However, the effect varies based on which aura you have active. If you're playing with casters on your team, you should be playing with Concentration Aura for the reduced interrupt duration. If you use Aura Mastery while you have Concentration Aura active, it will make the entire team immune to any interrupt or silence effects for 8 seconds. However, if you have melees on your team, you won't get too much value out of Concentration Aura, so you'll usually be playing with Devotion. Aura Mastery empowers your Devotion Aura to reduce the incoming damage to your team by 15% for 8 seconds. This is a great way to reduce the incoming damage during heavy bursts from the enemy team. One exception to this would be when playing with melees against a Shadow Priest, as Concentration Aura will reduce the duration of their silence effect. On top of having some offensive uses, this is of course a great way for you to outheal enemy burst. You can free cast for 8 seconds long without having to worry about any enemy interrupt. Before using this cooldown though, make sure that you identify which interrupts the enemy team has available. A great way to check this is by using the Omnibar add-on. Finally, your most important cooldown to deal with high burst from the enemy team, Avenging Wrath. This is your major cooldown, but you shouldn't be too conservative with using it. Generally speaking, you want to use it to prevent your team from falling behind and having to use their own defensive CDs. Additionally, every time you use Word of Glory, there is a 15% chance of proccing wings for 10 seconds. Keep in mind, if you get a proc during your Avenging Wrath, it will extend the duration. And if your team is all topped off and looking good during this time, it's a great chance to get down some additional damage like Judgment or Hammer of Wrath. Alright, we now have a good understanding of how to heal both sustained and burst damage. So it's now time to talk about how you should handle the start of arenas. The gates of the arena match have opened. What is it that you should be doing first? Well, the very first thing you should do as a Holy Paladin is to apply your beacons. They'll give you mana regen and Holy Power, but make sure that you apply them as soon as possible to prevent having to use a global cooldown on it later once combat actually begins. Another important goal as soon as the gates open is to try to build your Holy Power as soon as possible. The reason for that is that as soon as your team starts to take significant damage, you'll have a Word of Glory ready right away. So. How do you build your Holy Power when the gates have just opened? Well, it will be a combination of using your Holy Shock and Bestow Faith early on. On top of just building your Holy Power, having an Infusion of Light proc ready for when the enemy team starts a setup is great as well, allowing you to get off a big Holy Light. Now that you know all the healing preparation, there is something else which is extremely important and often overlooked. As soon as the gates open, you want to make sure that you position yourself near a pillar to easily line of sight any incoming CC with. If you don't position yourself near a pillar, you'll get crowd controlled very easily by the enemy team and you'll be forced to use defensives making you fall behind right away. We've already covered dealing with both sustained and burst damage on your teammates but 
What should you do if it's all directed at you? Well, it's time to learn how to handle healing while being trained yourself. Firstly, whenever you're being targeted, it is extremely important to play within line of sight of your teammates if you're playing with casters. They can often prevent you from having to use defensives by simply peeling the enemy players who are targeting you and healing you a bit if you play within their line of sight. Additionally, it makes sure that they're always able to cast their damaging spells without any downtime. However, when you're playing with melees and the enemy team is targeting you, this obviously won't be the case. You usually want to make sure that you make the enemy melees follow you into position, which both makes it hard for the enemy healer to heal them and which makes it hard for the enemy melees to help their healer when needed. One of the most important things as a holy paladin while being trained is making sure that you don't overlap your defensive CDs. Dropping low can seem scary and might tempt you into overlapping multiple defensives, but this will almost always backfire and create kill windows for the enemy team later on. So how do you heal exactly when being trained? Well, ideally you want to prevent casting as much as possible and try to keep yourself stable with Holy Shock, Bestow Faith, and Word of Glory. Of course, you can use Divine Favor as well, but be wary of purge interrupts. Getting interrupted while being targeted can very easily lose you the game and is a major weakness, so try to minimize having to cast. On top of spamming instant casts with the occasional divine favor, there will be times where you'll be forced to cast a normal heal. In that case, try to get to safety by using your blessing of freedom and divine steed beforehand. Once you create some distance from the enemy players, there will be a lot less risk of being interrupted when casting. Now that we've got all of your heals covered, is there anything else that you can do to assist you with winning the game while being trained? Well, a pro tip that you can make use of is to use Hammer of Justice or Blinding Light on any enemy player who is targeting you as long as they cannot be dispelled by their healer. If you do this while they're within line of sight of the enemy healer, they'll just instantly get dispelled and you'll have wasted your CC. But what this achieves, if done correctly, is that you have six seconds to either spam heal yourself or create distance between you and the enemy player. So we've been over all the basics that come with healing as a Holy Paladin. Are there any additional tips to help you min-max your healing? Well, the Holy Paladin healing toolkit is fairly straightforward. You build up your Holy Power by using your Holy Shock, Bestow Faith, and by healing into your beacon. Even though there aren't too many special tips to min-maxing your healing, one good thing to do while you are within melee range of one or multiple enemies is to use your Crusader Strike as often as possible for some extra Holy Power regeneration, allowing you to cast more Word of Glories. On top of simply using Crusader Strike, something else that you can do is to maximize usage of your Hammer of Wrath. It's usable on enemies who are either below 20% HP or all the time during wings. Making the most out of your Hammer of Wrath may not seem like a big deal, but with the recent Holy Paladin mana changes, mana efficiency became a lot more important. On top of generating Holy Power, it also actually does a ton of damage as well. So why is it important to use damaging spells to generate Holy Power sometimes? Well, even though it may not seem too significant, the extra holy power lets you do more word of glories, therefore also having a chance to proc awakening and giving you avenging wrath for 10 seconds, often allowing you to easily recover. And finally, now that you know all about healing, are there any interactions with other classes that you need to know about as well? Well, the first and most important interaction that you should know about is the interaction between Divine Favor and Purge. Purge is a term used to describe many spells which remove a beneficial magical effect from an enemy target. So it's not just shamans who have it. So you're casting Divine Favor, Holy Light, or Flash of Light. You should be completely safe against interrupts, right? Well, not exactly. If someone on the enemy team purges your divine favor while you are casting a heal, it actually becomes interruptible midway through the cast. If you're up against one or multiple players who have their interrupts ready and also have a purge as a part of their toolkit, you have to be extremely careful that you don't get interrupted. To prevent this from happening as much as possible, try to position yourself near a pillar, making it hard for the enemy team to reach you. So is that all you have to be careful of? Well, an even stronger variant of purge is of course mages with their spell steal, taking any beneficial buff from someone on the enemy team to get it to work on themselves. This is especially important to know for your blessing of freedom and blessing of protection. Let's say you're playing 3v3 arena with two melees on your team and you're facing a mage who uses frost nova. If you now use hand of freedom to remove the nova, the mage can easily spell steal your freedom, making it extremely hard to reach them. What you can do to prevent this from happening is using the following macro. Using this macro will prevent enemy mages from stealing your blessing of protection and blessing of freedom. Now enough of those purges and spell steals. Are there any other interactions? As many of you will know, Windwalkers are extremely strong this season, being one of the best melees with absolutely crazy damage output. Well, 
Windwalker's biggest defensive cooldown is the spell Touch of Karma. Holy Paladin has a nice interaction with this spell. If the Karma is applied to yourself, you can use both Divine Shield and Blessing of Protection to completely remove Touch of Karma from the enemy monk. If the monk applies Touch of Karma to one of your teammates instead, you can use Bop on them to remove it completely, making it much easier to land a kill on the monk. However, don't do this whenever the monk is a bit low HP. Make sure to only use it when you're sure it'll win you the game. Lastly, there's one more interaction with one of your PvP talents, which is especially strong versus Elemental Shamans. The Cleanse the Weak PvP talent dispels all allies within your aura range from the same effect, if you dispel only one of them. What makes this so good versus Shamans is the fact that a decent amount of their damage comes from having Flame Shocks on many targets. Cleanse the Weak makes it extremely easy to constantly dispel these, reducing the enemy Ellie Shaman's damage by a ton. Alright then, everyone, that's going to conclude part 2 of our Holy Paladin course. But as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.